Uh, welcome everybody to the functional group update of product. Um, today I'm going to discuss, oh, this is not working, wait, yeah, there we go. Uh, latest product news, 10.5, and we'll talk a little bit about product values. And I'll, I'll try to keep it within five minutes, maybe, stretching it a little bit, um, and then there's plenty of time for questions. So, latest news, not a lot, but very important. Jeremy joined, he's the product manager for GitLab.com now. Just getting started, incredibly overwhelmed with all the new things, but now you know uh, who to find for anything related to GitLab.com, its subscriptions, and things that are specific to it. Um, welcome, Jeremy. All right, let's talk about 10.5. So this Thursday, we are releasing 10.5, um, and it's an incredible release. It truly is the best release we've ever done. It's so incredibly full of good stuff that I wanted to just, I'm going to highlight a few, but these are not even the main, all the main features. The list is incredibly long of big deal features. So I'm very proud of everyone, of uh, all having worked very hard to make this happen. Uh, let me highlight some of the ones that I'm very excited about. So to start off in Libre, we're shipping Let's Encrypt for GitLab. And I wanted to mention this because when you read this, you might think to yourself, oh, well, what is that thing? It sounds very technical. Um, but what this is, is that this is for everyone that installs GitLab. So you're installing GitLab, it's very simple. Uh, now you get out of the box HTTPS. So you get an encrypted connection to the GitLab instance that you set up yourself. Now you may ask, why is this a big deal? You'll, well, I'll tell you. A few years ago, this was an incredible pain to do. It cost money to get a certificate. You would have to install it. You would have to maintain it. You would have to renew it. You have to make sure that that is all done. Now GitLab does all of this for you. Um, and it's made possible by Let's Encrypt, which is this large initiative, which you can Google about. Um, but this is so cool. I remember when Let's Encrypt was announced as a project, we said to each other, oh, one day we can have this GitLab. But today is the day. So, well, Thursday, but still, um, super exciting. Very nice feature. And I'm happy that we're putting it in Libre. Next one, external files in uh, CI YAML. So CI YAML is where you define what CI does for you. Most important file in any repository in GitLab, basically. So if you have premium, what you will be able to do now is you'll be able to include external files. So that means that if you have an external definition that you want to use, for instance, you have a number of steps that you always want to do for every single project, you can simply now have one line that says, oh, I want to include this file. And as long as CI can reach that file, so it has access to that, it will include it. And you can even um, make modifications to what you actually want to, want to do. So this is very useful for almost everybody. Uh, very cool feature. And I, I know a lot of people are excited about this. And then already in 10.5, uh, so as you know, we acquired Gymnasium, which was a very cool startup that does dependency checks. Uh, and in 10.5, we have integrated that into GitLab. So that means that if you're running GitLab Ultimate, you'll be able to have your dependencies checked for any vulnerabilities. So as you know, all software is built out of a million vulner uh, vulnerabilities, a million dependencies. Uh, and uh, you want to be sure that none of them are vulnerable or you want to know when to update which. So Gymnasium tells you that, and it's already part of Auto DevOps. So that means if you have an Auto DevOps um, project set up, it will just work and you just get notifications about your dependencies. All right, next one. Oh, this is a picture of it where you see here on top um, high directory traversal vulnerability in Ruby zip. So Ruby zip would be uh, one of those dependencies. You see the rest of the one um, are checked off, but uh, this is one that is uh, vulnerable. And then you know it right in a bridge request where everything happens. Super cool thing. I'm, I'm super excited about this. All right, and then the last one I wanted to highlight, and oh, I'm already at four minutes, it's hard, is uh, roadmaps and Epic Search. So I kind of cheated because I put two here, both in Ultimate. So we finally released roadmaps, and this is a very first, very simple iteration, but it's already very nice. It basically gives you a few of all your Epics, when they start and when they end and when we are, where we are now. And we also allowed you to search over Epics. Here's a picture of it. Uh, this is actually a picture I took today of the epics that we have in the GitLab org group. So you can actually see it there if you squint your eyes. Uh, and, and you see all the ongoing epics. And you also see that all the epics are basically happening today. <laughs> so probably we have to change our planning here a little bit. Uh, 
this is this is first start. We want to do a million other things here, um, but I'm very excited with this already because it it makes you want to use epics, and that's very important. All right, so. So far for the features in 10.5, there's much more coming. You can check out the merge request and the order review app if you want an early preview. You can wait till Thursday if you're very patient. You can also ask me in person. <laughs> I wanted to talk about product value. So usually I talk about what was in the brief in the current version or upcoming and what are we doing in the next one. Um, considering you have a release coming Thursday, we're in the middle of working on one. And because all of this information is easily accessible, I figured why not talk about something else for a change. So this is gonna be short, three minutes max, um, but I think it's interesting to give you an idea of how we think about building a product, how we think about building new features and what are those values that we try to stick to. So this is all in the uh, product handbook with a lot more detail, but I wanted to walk you through it to give you an idea of like, why do we release roadmaps as it is? Why don't we build it out as a big feature? The first thing is, is we always want to ship the minimally viable change. Uh, this is a strange sounding, an MVC, strange sounding acronym made up by me, but uh, the idea is that we look for the smallest possible change that we can possibly ship in a particular release. Um, and there's a really nice comic that ex essentially explains what that means, but it means that you have something that can stand on its own, so we can release, it's not broken, doesn't break anything else, but in all other ways, it's the smallest possible thing that we can possibly do. And the reason for this is that we don't spend a lot of time engineering something which we might not need. If we release something very small, we can immediately get feedback on how people use it, whether they like it, um, but also whether it's stable, where it's performant. It's very hard to predict what you will need in the future. So if you rather spend your efforts into quickly releasing something, you quickly get that feedback rather than having to try to predict what happens in the future. Uh, because you will always be wrong if you do it that way. And this way, we can really build products based on feedback, really build products that people want. This is very important to the way we do things at GitLab. Uh, it's also very easy to get this wrong and very easy to over-engineer things. So this is one that's very important to us. Other one, convention of configuration. This is very simple. If we have the choice, should we make something configurable or should we make something work in a particular way out of the box? we go for that convention, for something that works out of the box, even if it is a little bit opinionated. It reduces complexity and overall makes products much easier to use. Uh, if you end up making everything configurable from the start, you get a very complex product that's also very hard to iterate on. All right, next one, ambitiousness. Now, this XKCD doesn't match very well. If you have a better one, please suggest it to me or make a merge request to the product handbook. So apologies for that. Um, ambitiousness is simply exactly what it is. We wanna be ambitious. We started out as just a place to put your robust stories. And you all know that today we do so much more. Everything that differentiates GitLab is, what, is more than that, just those robust stories. Only by being ambitious can we win the market and can we change something about the way developers work today? Because that's essentially what we're the business in. So very important. And then lastly, and this XKCD is actually better at explaining what this actually means. So simplicity is, of course you wanna have a simple product and I could go quote Steve Jobs or whomever else, but what this really is about is that we create a product that just works, that doesn't put anything in the way. If we introduce a new feature, it should help you with something not make existing things or things that are easy, harder to do. It shouldn't require, like in a product handbook, I wrote something about human CPU cycles. Whenever we introduce something new, it shouldn't require you to run more human CPU cycles. It shouldn't be harder to do things. We should try to keep things simple. Um, this is easier said than done. It's very easy to say, well, let's just add this button here and then we have solved this problem. Uh, and this also goes back to the provision of configuration. I think these kind of things, this XKCD is a perfect explanation of this, where all these mobile sites nowadays have become horrible. If you open like a newspaper, there's like a bar on top and there's a thing in the screen and it's not a good experience. And I really don't want GitLab to ever become like that. Uh, and, but it creeps in. So we have to be very careful about keeping our product simple to use and keeping it very clean. So that's for simplicity. So, those are some of the values. There's a few more in the product handbook that are maybe less important or more specific to some situations. Um, 
I would love it if you would have a look, if you would have a read, suggest any changes. Um, and that's it. Uh, any questions about this release, future releases, products, anything? You can also throw them in the chat, but I prefer it if you just speak up. Hey, y'all. Um, so I, I, I think that a lot of these values are uh, essentially translation of our company values to how we build the products. Or am I seeing this uh, wrong way? Yeah, I, I always like to think that those two grew together a little bit. Um, I, it's not intentional, right? I think this is something that just came to be. Those product values I established very early and I named them slightly different uh, at first, but yeah, I think it aligns very closely with the way how we think about things. I think we're trying to very much avoid things that are very process heavy, things that are very complex. No one is helped by complexity. Complexity in itself is not a good value to have. Um, so if we try to go the other way in our product, it also makes sense to go the other way in our company. I think. Right, right. I'm not saying in, in a bad way, like, uh, oh, we should not have these values and always refer to the company values. I think it's really nice that we uh, naturally align to these product values and also that we show a product, um, have a product perspective on our company values uh, uh, naturally, basically. Thank you. I also don't know where that red line came from, everybody. I, only, I saw it as well. I thought it was on my screen or I was too busy talking to, to get it up. I think I did accidentally with Zoom or something or I don't know. Some markup. I, it's not my my the, the the app that I use to make the the slides. So there are no questions about all of our product, the way we think about GitLab, what we're going to build in the future. I left this time for a reason, everybody. It's now now now's your chance. So Yob, I have a question. Yeah. Go. Um, so you showed the 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 roadmap view um, with everything on, you know for epics for ten point five or whatever any today. Do you intend to drink that champagne a little bit more with product and try to use those roadmaps because that's not necessarily the way we you thought about it in the past. So I'm just curious if the product team is going to try and uh, drink that champagne or it's just kind of a nice to have. No, we're, st we're, we're starting to adopt epics as a start. And I think that's the first real step that we are taking right now. And there's something standing in a way of fully adopting them, like uh, comments on epics, which will come next release, I think. Um, that's the first start. The goal eventually is, is that we can fulfill all our own needs with epics and roadmaps and our issue management tools. What I want to be able to do is to have like powerful capacity planning, for instance, that if you say, well, if we do this and this at the same time, then we won't have time for that. Um, so all of these kind of things, yes, absolutely want to eat our own dog food, drink our own champagne. Um, that, that goes for almost all GitLab features. Um, on the short term, we're trying to adopt epics, at least in the product team. Don't know how we are going to use roadmaps at this point, but it certainly does look nice. So um, yeah suggest a way to use it and we're happy to give it a shot great thanks anything else the one question in chat was about the red line on my slide <laughs> yo i have yeah. another question Go um, the gymnasium dependency checks uh, i don't know how uh, how the gymnasium product was priced before we it was uh, acquired. Uh, what is the relationship between their previous pricing and our ultimate uh, level? There, there's no specific relationship. It's just part of ultimate. But is it is it equivalent? So it's kind of the same price. So customers can uh, switch to. Of course, it's not the same price because it includes GitLab basically, but. I'm saying in terms of value proposition, switching to GitLab to have to continue using gymnasium features. Uh, what, what did we think in that regard? As with everything, this is a first iteration, right? So if you think about what is the intrinsic value that it brings, 
it brings the core value of Gemnasium, but not everything they offered. So that's something for future iterations and things to come. Um, yeah, and in terms of pricing, yeah, as you said, we're right. We haven't changed it. Like we we had the established this pricing and the pricing for Ultimate before we even acquired Gemnasium. So that's there's no intentional correlation between the two. Um, I do think that it's, it's, a, it's an interesting offer, right? Otherwise we wouldn't price it this way and otherwise we wouldn't have this complete package. Um, what is always a good um, indicator is when I hear people say, oh, so much cool stuff in Ultimate. Uh, that's, that's a pretty good indication that we're doing something right and that there's a lot of value there. Like people that say, oh, Ultimate, oh, I really want it, but it's on the high side. You know, we want to provide enough value that people are like, mm, okay, I'm just gonna, uh, pay for them. And that's a very tricky balance. There's a pricing channel on Slack, which, uh, which you're free to join. Brad Walker says, ambition is good, but isn't there the possibility of overextending and not doing our core very well? Uh, <laughs> yes, there is. And that's a really, really great question. Uh, I think it's very important that we drive our vision and we drive what we work on by usage of feedback. Uh, and those two go hand in hand, right? So if a lot of people are using a particular thing, uh, we're more likely to invest in that. Um, and that's a virtuous cycle that strengthens the parts, the core parts of the product and, and gives less attention to the lesser parts of the product. And this is why we ship the minimal viable change so that, you know, the first iteration of monitoring was almost nothing, right? But if we see that people are using it, if we see that it's useful and people are giving us feedback about it, it incentivizes us to invest more in it and it becomes more used and it slowly becomes part of our core offering. Uh, and if you want to think about rough numbers, like the majority of the work that we spent in engineering, we still spend on like repositories and core CI. So um, that's a real world fact to replying that. Let's see. Um, uh, Clement says, I recently saw an issue about GitLab 11. Can you share a bit about it? So exciting. Yes. So GitLab tries to follow semantic versioning, which means that there's a major minor patch. So you have two dots. The first number right now, it's 10, is the major version. The second one, is 10.5, the five is the minor, and then point something, the last one is the patch. Patch releases, you don't change major features. There's, you can always upgrade to any patch release without having to worry. Minor versions, they might change significant parts of the product, but they uh, don't deprecate necessarily things. Like if you upgrade from one minor to another minor release, your integrations are not going to break. Major releases are opportunities to remove parts of the product that people might be using. So in other words, we can break things. We can break your integration or change something about the API. Uh, of course, we let you know, <laughs> but that's a way to think about it. So the point of GitLab 11 is um, twofold. One, it's to deprecate things, to take things out of the product that we have been wanting to take out, uh, but we couldn't because we we're just going from one minor release to the next minor release. And the other one is to say, hey, look at this. We may, did a big upgrade over the past months in a product and it's time to basically say to the world, wow, what a new version. So that is the point of GitLab 11. I created an issue. It's public, of course, uh, discussing the date of GitLab 11. I don't have it at hand, but maybe uh, Clement can link it in the chat. Um, it's important to establish this ahead of time so we can plan what we can deprecate so we can make a marketing plan to basically say, hey, there's this new version of GitLab and it's a big deal. Um, uh, and that's it so far, right? So I'm just planning, what are we going to deprecate? What are we gonna put in there? What is gonna be the message around the release? Uh, and I hope to do it before the summit. Like the real best thing would be on the summit, but then everyone is on the summit or on the way to the summit on August 22nd uh, was my idea. Um, also my daughter is born around that time, which it would make a perfect thing, but uh, it's probably not the best, best way to prioritize release. So, I, I hope to do it in June or July. All right, William, there's probably a difference between migration path for gymnasium users and adding cool gymnasium stuff to GitLab for GitLab users. I think 10.5 is the letter. Yeah, so 10.5 is more cool gymnasium stuff to GitLab. 
uh, for GitLab users, not necessarily migration path for gymnasium users. Although I would say they should all be using GitLab already. Okay, is there a separate security products update? Brennan asks, and that is tomorrow by Philippe. Gabriel, are we planning GDPR specific features? And if so, which plan will that be in? No, nothing specific, Gabriel. Luckily, we already do a bunch of auditing things and you can control your data very easily in GitLab. We will be, we posted a blog about it and we're doing some further review of the product. So maybe we make some changes here and there, uh, but suggestions are very welcome. Please open an issue and uh, ping the product channel. Doo -doo -doo. And Philippe uh, uh, proposes to organize something specific around the gymnasium functionality in GitLab and what else. All right. Uh, no worries, Philippe. That's very welcome, actually. Um, any more questions? I'm going to give you uh, three seconds. One, two, three. All right. Thanks, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the new view from my new webcam. Um, and uh, I'll see you all at the team call.